Hey everyone, happy Tuesday, happy election day. Today we're gonna to be going over some of the propositions regarding to real estate. I'm Mae Kunkka with Remax Elite Realty here in the San Gabriel Valley and I cover the greater Los Angeles area. Um, if you haven't voted yet and you're still really confused about all the propositions, I'm gonna be going over Proposition 5 and Proposition 10 specifically related to the real estate market. Um, so Proposition 5, let me read it, I don't wanna get it wrong, um, talks about changes requirements for certain property owners to transfer their property tax basis to a replacement property. Um, what that means is if the property owner falls into a certain category, and I'll go over the differences, and that's what we're voting about, um, which is age and uh, some kind of certain situation, whether or not they can keep their current tax basis, which is usually a lot lower, they probably purchased the property a while ago, and then they wanna be able to take that same tax basis, the low tax base, to a new home if they're relocating. Now, the controversy with this is that if they are able to take this tax break um, to move from property A to property B and keep that low basis, the city and counties lose extra money. So normally when, when a homeowner purchases a home, they actually get taxed on the sales value of that property. So um, you know now most properties are more than half a million dollars on average for a property. So think about how much revenue the city is getting, the county is getting from that new purchase. Now if these homeowners don't get that, their incentive is not to move. So what it means when you vote yes on Prop 5. So when you vote yes on Prop 5, the difference between the no is this, that all homeowners, and in this category, when they say all, they mean people who are over, homeowners who are over the age of 55, or and or severely disabled Californians, meaning if they suffered from a disaster, then they qualify to use this um, this tax break. Now, if you vote no on it, that means only certain homeowners, meaning still the age of 55 and other criterias would be the only ones that qualify under this. So, you know, it just depends on what boat you're sitting on. We're all gonna retire at some point if you're not retired already. Um, I think for me, obviously I'm biased, I'm a realtor, um, but I want you guys to think about all the propositions, regardless of what side you're on, kind of in a long, term range, and I'm gonna go into that in Proposition 10 as well, is that you know maybe this doesn't matter to you right now, you're young, you're far from 55 or over, but think about your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, uncles, friends and family who are gonna be in that category, or you in the later future when you wanna sell, and if say you bought your property at a very low rate, um, property tax rate, and then 30 years from now, can you imagine if you had to relocate what going to new property means, um, paying that, talk, uh, that property tax rate? So, you know, I'm not swaying you one way or the other, but just understand what the repercussions are. Don't just think about today if it affects you or not. Um, you know, it's hard because this will take away some funding from local ordinances, schools, um, everyone who benefits from the, from the property taxes, right? So police department, fire departments, um, health care, local, uh, you know, local uh, revenue for public schools, uh, libraries, stuff like that. So it does have an effect. And, you know, it's really hard to say what's fair and what's one better than the other. But just try to look at it from all angles to, to see if someone has been severely disabled from say a disaster and was forced to relocate, let's just say, and then they have to go ahead and, and purchase a property that's now at the new rate and it's two or three times what they're paying for property tax, you know, that's gonna be really difficult for some people. So just kind of put yourself in a couple of people's shoes to kind of get a well-rounded perspective on that. So, um, so again, if you vote yes, that means all homeowners who are eligible, um, that's seniors over 55, severely disabled, will can qualify under this proposition. And if you vote no, only certain homeowners will get to qualify under this proposition, okay? So the next one is Proposition 10, which is, um, I think, really heated because everyone, uh, you know, you're either a homeowner or a renter for the most part. Um, so. Proposition 10 expands local government authority to enact rent control 
on residential properties. Now, rent control. Uh, rent control means that the local governments can stipulate how much rent can be based on the local um, income, demographics, and so they can actually put a cap on how much rent is. I don't, we don't know what that's gonna look like th if this passes, um, because you know there's still rules to be in play, but as of right now, there are still cities here, not all of them, um, Los Angeles being one of them, that does have rent control. And so yeah, every year they decide how much, as far as the percentage, uh, landlords are able to increase the rent. Um, so what does that vote mean if you voted yes for Prop 10? Voting yes would not limit cities to rent control, and that would be up to the landlords to make that decision. So we don't have anyone stipulating how much we can increase rent. And voting no would allow state laws to continue to limit kinds of rent control. Now this is a really heated discussion because, you know, right now we're seeing market highs on rent right now and you know i have to agree i just see the market i think it's insane i think it's really high and i i really think that the best combination is not just having no rent control or having rent control i think there needs to be certain guidelines set to these rent controls i do think that um, we should we should have affordable affordable housing we should pay attention to the local income um, and make sure that we're not squeezing anyone out. Um, you know, you look at places like San Francisco and New York and where housing is so expensive, people are renting rooms, people are sharing rooms. And that's what it looks like when you don't have rent control in certain areas. And I certainly don't think that's beneficial even as a homeowner, but I also don't think having rent control um, as the way it is now is the way to go, but that's just my opinion. So if um, you we look at the pros and cons, the argument is uh, the pros for Prop 10 is that it puts fair housing and annual limits on amounts landlords can raise rent. I agree with that to some regards that yes, we should be able to say, hey, you shouldn't be able to rent, uh, to raise your rent like you know, 25, 30% in a jump, that's a lot to put on a, a renter, especially when they're up for renewal for their lease and to, to have that and everyone else increasing rent, that's a lot of stress to put on someone. Um, but the con is if uh, Prop 10 will make the housing crisis worse, not better. And, and to some respect, it's true. So if we say we have rent control um, throughout the whole county, right, where rents are only gonna be able to increase a certain amount. Well, that's not gonna stimulate people wanting to build more homes, wanting to purchase into rental properties, wanting to actually take care of their properties better. They're just not gonna have the funding for it. And investors are looking at this, and I know investors get a really bad rap sometimes, but you know, it is meant to produce income. And so, you know, if the, the rents aren't bringing that in and it's not sustaining just regular ma maintenance, nobody's gonna do that. And you're gonna see that in the long term. Again, pay attention to this in the long run. What is that gonna do with additional housing? People aren't gonna build new housing. Um, you know, the ADU that uh, the LA County has, has implemented, who's gonna add another unit if it doesn't make financial sense? It can cost 20, 30, $40,000 starting just to build that and then if the rent's not going to be able to cover it nobody's going to do that and if we don't have those additional housing units to make sense we're still going to go into a different crisis so just kind of look at it from different angles like i mentioned before and not just say like absolutely not we should have rent control or absolutely not should be up to the landlords i think there there's a lot of things that need to change where affordable housing is is the conversation right now that we should have. So I hope that clarifies some of that for you. I hope it didn't confuse you even more, but more importantly, guys, go out there and vote. It's important. Even if you don't vote, that is, you know, setting off something. So um, I think these are really important topics, especially now with the housing market. Um, again, you know, this is my full-time job and seeing, seeing local residents have a hard time purchasing homes uh, working professionals, 
um, with two incomes sometimes still not being able to afford something that to me is very sad so um, go out there you know uh, we're gonna put a link up so that you can have a voters guide if you're you're uh, wanting to read up more about this if you haven't voted yet but just go out there and vote and um, I hope you guys have a great day and private message me if you have any questions regarding these propositions I don't know about the other stuff I voted three weeks ago at home so um, I threw away all my notes all right so have a good day um, you can follow us on Facebook Twitter Instagram and then you can find me at maykunkarealtor.com thanks so much Go out there and vote. Have a good day. Bye.